October 13th, 2022, this banner appeared in Beijing. Then on November 24th in Ulumuzi, in northwest China, a fire ripped through an apartment building, killing at least 10. On social media, people blamed the government's strict COVID lockdown measures. For over three months, many had been unable to leave their houses. They took to the streets to protest, calling for an end to China's zero COVID policy and for freedom and reform. This kind of dissent hasn't been seen in China for decades. It reminded the world of the last time this happened. I think this is truly an extraordinary development in China, something that we had not seen at least since the Tiananmen Square protest. The most significant wave of protest since Tiananmen Square. The biggest thing since Tiananmen Square. But these protests ended very differently. We talked to veterans of Tiananmen Square. In 1989, I was a graduate student. I was the student organizer at uh, Tsinghua University. I participated and also led part of my university uh, 33 years ago at uh, Tiananmen Square. In the 80s, China was in the midst of a major economic reform, thanks to the party leader Deng Xiaoping. Then, in April 1989, the pro-reform general secretary of the Chinese Communist Party, Hu Yaobang, suddenly died of a heart attack. Well, he died uh, that triggered the protest. Thousands of students from all over China began taking to the streets. Eventually, they congregated in Tiananmen Square in Beijing, some camping out for weeks. I went to Tiananmen Square every day to join the demonstrations. There were like thousands of people asking for political changes. We were really calling for clean government, anti-corruption. All of a sudden, you found you could speak rather freely what you dared not to touch on uh, before the protest started. Literally, millions of people with real hope. Of course, little did we know or prepare for a bloody uh, a military crackdown the massacre. At the end of May, the Chinese government declared martial law and deployed more than 250,000 troops to the capital. Then, on June 4th... Soldiers fired automatic weapons into crowds of civilians. No one really imagined there could be live fire. We went down to the ground to avoid bullets, then tried to save those wounded or dead. News organizations around the world captured the tragedy. After hours of shooting and facing a line of troops, the crowd is still here. The Chinese Red Cross says at least 2,600 people were killed. An official government announcement put the death toll at around 300 people. Other estimates are as high as 10,000. We probably will never know the true number because it has being repressed so hard. During the Tiananmen Square protests, citizens openly called for democracy. For the next three decades, those calls would be silenced. Until now. The regime's policies of intense repression have made protests rare and almost impossible to start. So what happened in the past week certainly exceeded my expectations. The protesters asking for freedom and democracy and even Xi Jinping stepped down. I think people were totally fed up with this dictatorial oppression in the name of COVID. It really reminded me of what had happened in Tiananmen Square. There were some striking similarities. Like the Tiananmen protests, students found themselves on the front lines. 
Over 100 university campuses were mobilized. I was especially moved by protests at Tsinghua University. <laughs> the university is so tightly controlled. The hundreds of gathered together, chanting freedom, democracy. <laughs> that we did 33 years ago. There are also some major differences between then and now. The biggest difference now is that uh, uh, people are not gathering at Tiananmen Square, a physical place. That's no longer possible in China. Instead, uh, Twitter and Telegram is the only area where we can exchange um, information freely and you have this sense of camaraderie among people for a free China. But just as technology has helped the protesters organize, it also helps the government suppress them. The Communist Party used the AI and face recognition technology to identify you and to detain you. In a sense, these protesters are facing a much broader consequences than 33 years ago. And the biggest difference On December 7, 2022, after three years of continuous lockdown, the Chinese government announced that it would ease zero COVID restrictions. Many questions remain unanswered. How big a crackdown will follow? Is China ready for the COVID cases that will come with opening up? And has this triggered a political awakening in a new generation? The only thing that's clear is that young people are angry. The protest had the same spirit that we had 30 years ago to protest against the political status quo and demanding for change, knowing there is probably going to be a price we had to pay. I'm very deeply moved and encouraged uh, um, to see this younger generation are finally uh, waking up. Democracy! 